Welcome to the Referencing Online Sources webinar recording for APA 6 Referencing. This topic will be useful for ACAP and HSA students. This is a recording of the material we cover in the live webinar of this topic. You may want to just watch the video straight through or use the pause button to stop and read or do activities. The webinar slides are available at this link. In this session we're going to look specifically at online sources. If you're interested in the basics of APA referencing, try the Referencing Starter Pack video. OK, it's not surprising that an online source is anything you find on the internet. This includes anything you find through the ACAP Library website, such as ebooks and academic journal articles. A quick word about journal articles. A journal is like a magazine of academic research. There are lots of different journals on lots of different academic topics. A journal is published several times a year and each issue contains a number of articles. Each article is written by different authors and the articles are mostly about research the authors have done recently. Now we all know there's a lot of rubbish on the internet, right? So you need to be careful about which online sources you use. Think about these things. Firstly, does the author of the information have authority? What are their credentials or qualifications? Is it scholarly information or just popular? If the author is an organisation, is the organisation an authority in the field? Then look at the currency, which is the age of the information. Is it recent? Does it matter if it's not recent? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Next, think about if the information is appropriate. Is the content just someone's opinion or is it research based? Does the information really fit your topic? Is the content biased or balanced? Lastly, look at the purpose and point of view of the author. Does the author have a hidden agenda, for example? Are they trying to sell you something or just get you to view an ad? Essentially, ebooks academic journals and the websites of reputable organisations are better sources of information than other online sources. There are assignments that require you to talk about videos on YouTube or newspaper articles, but these are not the standard types of academic sources for most assignments. OK, let's look at in-text referencing for online sources. It's actually just the same as for other sources. You need an author's surname and a year. If you're quoting information, you also need a page or paragraph number. Here's a journal article. Let's say we want to use the information from this article in an assignment. I need the author's surnames and the year if I paraphrase the information. I need to add the page number if I quote. I can put the author's surnames and then the year in brackets first in my sentence, as we have here. Or I can put the information first and the author's surnames and year in brackets after the information. Just a note here, if the source has three, four or five authors, the first time you reference it in text, you put all the author's surnames. The next time you reference the same source and every time thereafter, you should use et al as shown here. Et al means, and the others. If a source has six or more authors, use et al right from the first in-text reference. These rules for using et al apply to all sources, not just online ones. Now, if I want to put exactly the words from the original article in my assignment, a quote, I need to add a page number, if there is one. Some online documents are just a long piece of text, on the same page. In that case, I need to count the paragraphs and add the paragraph number where I found the quote. I use the abbreviation PARA for the paragraph number. So let's move on to talk about the reference list. All online sources need location information in the reference list, either a DOI, which is a unique code given to a document, or a URL, which is the website address of the document. DOIs are mostly given to journal articles and sometimes to ebooks. You know how when you try to use old links to things on the internet, often the link is broken and you can't find the document. 
The aim of DOIs is to avoid this. They provide a permanent link and identity for a document. This example shows how to put a DOI in a reference list entry. If your source does not have a DOI, you need a URL. That's the web address where you found the information. Here's an example of how to put a URL in a reference list entry. You use the words retrieved from and then the URL. For every source, whether online or not, you need to find an example of how to format that type of source in the reference list and then follow that example. I'm going to find the quick guide to referencing to help me. This is the learning support website. Here is the section on referencing and the quick guide is here. I'm going to do a reference list entry for the article I used before. So I'm looking for the reference list information and journal articles. There are two examples here, with a DOI or without a DOI. My article has a DOI, so I need these things. Author's surnames and initials, year, title of the article, title of the journal, volume number, page numbers of the article, and the DOI. Back to my article. I need the author's names, year, article title, journal title, volume number, page numbers, and the DOI. Great, it's all here. And now I'm going to show you a trick. There is usually a cite button when you're looking at information about an article or ebook. Here it is. I choose APA 6 and voila, there is the information for my reference list. But be very careful with cite buttons. Often the information they give you is not quite right. You need to check it carefully with the quick guide, the learning support website or the APA style guide. Here's the reference list entry for that article all formatted correctly. The formatting rules are also in the quick guide. Another hint for you, if a journal article doesn't have a DOI, you need to put the name of the journal in Google and find the journal home page and put that URL in the reference list, not the URL or the web address from the ACAP library. Now let's look at an ebook. Here we have the ebook Positive Psychology in Practice. On the quick guide, it says I need the author's surnames and initials, year, title, and the URL of the ebook library. Back to the ebook, and I can find that information, but I can also use the Cite This Book button. Here it is. I can copy and paste this into my reference list. When I check this against the quick guide, I notice that I need to make these first names into initials. I need to put the title in italics and I need to remove the hyperlink. Right click with your mouse to get that option. That's better. Remember to check these formatting things against the quick guide. Now let's look at a website. Say I want to use information from this Beyond Blue report that I found on their website. Looking at the quick guide, for a web page in the reference list, I need an author, year, title and URL. There's no individual author listed on the report, so I need to use the organisation's name, Beyond Blue, as the author. Then the year, that can be tricky to find. Often there's a date listed with copyright information at the end of a document. I'll check at the end. Here we go, copyright Beyond Blue 0214, so that's 2014. The title is here and the subtitle is here. I take this URL here for the location. So my reference list entry should look like this. OK, now let's do a YouTube video. Looking at the quick guide, I can see that I need an author, date, title and URL. Let's look at a video to find that information. This one has been uploaded by Saybrook University, so we use that as the author. The date is here, the title of the video is here. I copy the URL from here. So this is what the entry should look like in our reference list.
OK, let's put all the sources we've been looking at together into one reference list. This is the web page, this one is the ebook, this is the video, and this one is the journal article. For more information and help, here are links to the Learning Support website and the APA Style website. Get in touch with us at Learning Support if you have any queries or need specific advice about an assignment you're writing. Good luck with your studies.